morning come from both the Gospel of Luke and the Gospel of Matthew. They are of the same story, but temptation in the wilderness. But I invite you to hear how these two Gospel writers share the story. There's a few differences, so you might listen for those, especially in the second reading, to catch the complete story. God's word from us, for us, from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. Jesus is tested in the wilderness. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, You are the Son of God. Tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to Jesus, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led Jesus to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, so guard you carefully. And they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all his, this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. Now hear the story from Matthew's Gospel. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended Jesus. This is God's holy word for us this day. This morning's Lenten story is immediately after Jesus' baptism, where God claims him as the beloved Son of God, the Messiah. So from the Jordan River, the Spirit leads Jesus into the wilderness. As Jesus' ministry is just beginning, he goes into the Judean wilderness, a desolate area near the Dead Sea, stretching between Jerusalem and Jericho. Jesus fasts in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights. He is practicing discipleship, going off alone for a time of confession, a time of reflection, a time for fasting, cleansing his soul for the mission ahead. 
a time of prayer and of letting go. Time with God in preparation for all that was to come in the ministry ahead. The wilderness represents chaos, isolation, and even danger. But the wilderness also reminds us of Israel's journey from Egypt to the land of promise, the fulfillment of God's promise. Both the setting and the duration of Jesus' fast connects him with Moses and Elijah. Moses was on Mount Sinai twice for 40 days and nights, and the second time he didn't eat or drink. Elijah walked 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Horeb. 40 days was also the length of Noah's flood, a story of both judgment and new creation. Our Lenten journey is 40 days long. We also recall the people of God, the Israelites, wandering for 40 years in the wilderness, being led by God and tested. The settings of Jesus' temptations in the wilderness in the city of Jerusalem and on a very high mountain, all connect richly to the Israelite story, the leaders along with the memories and the hopes. It is at the tail end of Jesus' time in the wilderness that he encounters the devil, the tempter, who entices humans to sin and frustrates God's will for the people. Go into the wilderness, Jesus is told, and there he is tempted. Jesus had experienced God's affirmation of who he actually was in the Jordan River. It was clear that he was the Son of God, called on a mission as Messiah. Now in the wilderness, Jesus is challenged to look at the strategy of that mission. Being who he is called to be, redeemer and savior, saving a fallen world, how will he make that happen? Perhaps that is why Jesus was led into the wilderness in the first place, to be still and focus on the mission before him and to discern how God would use him to make that mission come into being. After 40 days of preparation, fasting, and cleansing his mind, body, and soul, Jesus is tempted, tested. The whole focus of the temptations, the how of life as, as Messiah, is unfolding. For each of the temptations, in which order you put them, Scripture is Jesus' resource. The answers he gives to the tempter in all three situations came right out of Deuteronomy, directly from the Jewish Torah. Jesus' ministry begins as he lets go of temptation and lets, God, and lets God's word be his resource and his response to the one who tempts. The first temptation sets the scene for all of the tests. If you are the Son of God, the tempter is trying to make Jesus doubt his Messiahship. You don't really believe you are the Messiah, do you? Let's do a little test to see if it's indeed true. I know you are hungry after such a long fast, so turn these stones into bread. Jesus is not being questioned whether he has the power to command the stones to become bread, but whether he will put his power to use to satisfy his own hunger, his own needs. 
The tempter is really suggesting that Jesus will die if he doesn't eat. Jesus must take care of himself. If he doesn't take care of himself, no one else will. We've all been there at some time or another, tempted by something or someone to focus only on ourselves. Just take care of ourselves. Just take care of number one. We need to let go of that temptation. Our focus is not to be on ourselves, but instead to care for our neighbor and love our neighbor as ourselves. A time to be focused and caring for others, not a time to be tested to put ourselves first and only. Jesus' answer? Remember when Moses told the Israelites that God let them experience hunger so that God might feed them with manna and they might learn to trust God's word? When Jesus is challenged to let to turn stones into bread. He replies that strength comes only from God. We are challenged to let go of our own temptation for it to be all about us. And we need to let go of life's tests by trusting God. Let God provide everything that is needed. The Israelites Strength, Jesus' strength, and our strength comes only from God. From the desolate and harsh environment of the Judean wilderness, Jesus is taken to the developed space of the holy city, to Jerusalem where the hopes of God's people were realized and then so often dashed. For the nation of Israel, Jerusalem was the geographical center of the world, the location of political and economic and religious power. It was the holy city, believed to be filled with God's presence, more than any other city, and it still is today. It was in the Jerusalem temple where one met God, it was the seat of the kings and the focus of the messianic hopes and expectations. There, Jesus is placed on the pinnacle of the temple, the highest point in the city. There, the powers of heaven and earth intersect. This time, the challenge is whether Jesus, Father, and God will intervene to save his life. If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. Give the crowd something spectacular. Jump the 400 feet or so into the Kidron Valley. And when you land unscathed, people will be dazzled, and you will be famous. Will Jesus trust in God and God's promise to preserve life? Or more to the point, Will Jesus reveal his power publicly in the holy city from God's holy temple? Challenged to resist the natural laws of creation, Jesus responds that God is not to be put to the test. God was ever faithful in providing the people of Israel with everything they needed to take possession of the promised land. God will be ever faithful. Jesus does not need popularity. He does not need tricks or even miracles to prove God's faithfulness. Instead, we will trust God in the call of his mission and ministry. This temptation also connects to the cross, where Jesus, the Son of God, will refuse the request for him to come down from the cross and save himself. This strategy for popularity is a temptation that many of us have experienced in life. There are times when we would like to get a bit of recognition, get attention, or take the credit even where it's due. 
A good reminder when we are tempted is the saying, there's no limit to the amount of good you can do if you don't care who gets the credit. We need to let go of the recognition, the need sometimes to pat ourselves on the back and expect others to notice too. But if we let God, if we are trusting God, we don't need to make the front page of the paper or throw ourselves into wanting credit for our actions. We instead can ask God to show us the place or places to serve. And if we succeed, we can give the credit to the Lord. Then there is the test that challenges again Jesus' faithful trust in God's power. In Matthew's Gospel, each temptation moves higher. First, the Spirit led Jesus up to the wilderness from the Jordan River Valley. Then he is taken to the pinnacle of the temple, and now they go to a very high mountain. From there, Jesus can see all the empires of the world in their glory. Each new location represents a higher and broader perspective and an increased elevation of the power offered. This temptation promises Jesus' success. He can have the world and rule over it all. All he needed to do was to worship the devil and ignore what God wanted. The end justifies the mean. If your ambition is a worthy one, it's okay to break the rules. Even those rules that God has laid down for our conduct and behavior. To meet our goals, we need to cut a few corners. If we ignore the moral and ethic, ethical rules, written or unwritten, that God has for us, and we think that we are a special case and above the rules, we are being tempted. We have to let go of those moments when the temptation to do something we know is wrong exists. Or when success is at the cost of what we know to be right. When Jesus invite, is invited to worship the devil in return for worldly kingdoms, he answers that God alone shall be served, and God's will be done. When we let go, we are trusting, following, and being faithful to the one who calls us beloved and loves us no matter what. The kind of power the devil offers is the power of domination, exploitation, and manipulation. The kind of power that divides and destroys and does not care about healing and mercy. God's power, as Jesus' ministry will reveal, is inclusive, restorative, healing, and merciful. Three temptations. Does the order really matter? Take care of yourself over others. Be successful no matter the cost. And seek the spotlight. The devil then departs, and the angels, whom Jesus earlier refused to ask for help, minister to his needs. But we are told that the tempter will be back. Gone only until an opportune time. Chaos, isolation, and danger overcome with trust, faithfulness, and the power of God. Ever wonder how we know about the time of trial for Jesus, Son of God, Messiah? Because he told the disciples of his struggle with the devil. He shared his experience being tempted and tested. 
Jesus wanted them and us to know that there will be temptation. But we can get through those temptations and be okay. We can share with each other our struggles and temptations as well. Just as the disciples learned that Jesus could be tempted too, they saw how letting go and letting God could be their strength and could help them overcome and survive those tests. We can survive those tests and temptations too. We just need to let God be our strength. Through the temptations, Jesus fulfills and rewrites Israelites' story. Jesus carries with him into the wilderness the story of God's people. They are testing, and he accomplishes what they could not. Jesus demonstrates complete trust in God and remains faithful to God's call. Jesus' ministry has begun in full force. Out of the wilderness, the holy city, and the temptation of power, Jesus will let God be ever-present for the people who believe, who understand that God is in control, and that God's faithfulness is not to be tested. When we are tempted, distracted, challenged, or tested, we also need to turn to God and find faithfulness. Letting go of all those things that keep us from focusing on God, God's will, will strengthen us by finding hope and trust in the Lord our God. When we trust in God, we can endure all things. That doesn't mean that times won't be difficult, but it does mean that God is by our side to journey with us. If we are carrying all those things that challenge us and burden us in the wilderness, then we have put a barrier between us and God. That makes the journey harder, like carrying a heavy backpack. We all do it. The hope comes in knowing that God helps us let go of those things to empty the pack or certainly lessen the weight. Because the more we let go of, the more we let God in. What do you need to let go of today and in the days ahead? Where do you need to make room to let God in? Remember, everything you let go of makes the journey lighter and makes more room for God in the wilderness. And in those sacred places and moments and also in those high points of our lives. Let God in. May it always be so.